Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. Today, we are continuing our nuclear fortnight, remembering the 75th anniversary of the only combat use of nuclear weapons by talking about nuclear power, weapons, development, uh, and its relationship to the battleship New Jersey. USS New Jersey had the capacity, capacity to be armed with nuclear warheads in the 1980s. This capacity was given by the intermediate range cruise missiles, the Tomahawk. I'm sitting at one of the green screen consoles that controlled Tomahawk operations. Uh, and if you look here at the console in front of me, there are the twin authentication keys with a nuclear arming switch and a fire enabling switch uh, and your classic covered button uh, to launch nuclear warhead, just like all the movie tropes told you there should be. A battleship New Jersey could carry up to 32 Tomahawk cruise missiles, but they weren't all nuclear. Uh, in fact, the Navy claims that none of them were nuclear. So uh, the ship definitely had the capacity to carry nuclear weapons, but it's never been confirmed or denied if she did. Um, odds are at some point during the 1980s, she did deploy with nuclear weapons. Her crew definitely trained on how to use them uh, and even how to defend the ship from a nuclear attack. On board Battleship New Jersey uh, in the 1980s, Tomahawks came in three different flavors. Uh, the A model was able to carry a nuclear warhead. The B model was used for maritime targeting. Uh, and there was a C model, which was a conventional land attack missile. Those were the ones that the Iowa class battleships used. Uh, although they could have been and probably were armed with all three types. A fourth model, the D, which has uh, it's, it's a conventional land attack missile, but it has sub munitions inside. It's perfect for destroying airfields. Uh, and then other variants have been made since the Iowa class battleships left service. Right now, only conventional land attack cruise missiles are used uh, on board ships and submarines. And only the United States and Great Britain operate the Tomahawk cruise missile. The reason uh, nuclear armed ones were taken off of these ships in the early 90s is because of uh, international arms limitation treaties. Nuclear warhead goes off on a surface ship, it can do a lot more damage than on a submarine underwater. So the United States, the Soviet Union, um, I guess it was the Russian Federation by that point, decided to remove nuclear warheads from surface ships. The sea attack variant was removed for reasons we've already discussed, uh, because you need very accurate information beyond your own ship's sensor abilities to hit a target at the range of these missiles, it was very difficult to get that information and actually fire a missile. So, uh, for that reason, uh, the cost of the weapons for that reason, they were removed from the Navy's arsenal since the Harpoon anti-ship missile uh, could already engage surface targets out to the range of the ship's own sensors and a little bit beyond. Now, in recent years, China has developed extremely long range uh, anti-ship missiles. And so the United States is getting back in the game uh, and this year is planning on developing a new uh, maritime attack version of the missile. So Tomahawk cruise missiles have a fairly long range. Um, in fact, it outranges the ship's own sensors capability. Our surface search radar is good out to about 50 miles or so, depending. Uh, however, the Tomahawks have ranges of several hundred miles, depending on the variant. And with a modern day price tag of roughly 1.8 million dollars per missile, you can't just launch them willy-nilly. 
you have to often pre-program a, uh, a a firing solution into the the Tomahawk's computer brain, uh, so they will launch and perform that mission. So if we're launching a cruise missile, oftentimes we're taking data from a different uh, platform, whether it's a satellite has told us where the target is, or an aviation asset from a carrier or a ground base, uh, or some other ship that is more forward deployed than we are. Uh, so that information may not be completely up to date. We plug that information into this console right here called the TP, the Tomahawk Engagement Planning Exercise Evaluator. And then this tells us what the odds are of, of the Tomahawk being able to hit the target. If the odds are in the high 90s, then it's maybe worth taking the shot. Uh, if it is lower than that, you don't want to flush $1.8 million down the toilet uh, for a low chance of, say, hitting a maneuvering Soviet warship. Now we're one deck above the combat engagement center where we were just uh, a minute ago. This, on the O3 level, uh, is just aft of the flag bridge. In fact, for most of the ship's career, this was part of the flag admiral's facility, uh, a flag communication space, other stuff like that. In the 1980s, and possibly only on New Jersey, this space was converted to hold computers and safes uh, relating to the Tomahawk cruise missile. I'm no expert on this weapon system, but I believe that these are the computers that plotted the uh, ground terrain mapping uh, and firing solution for the Tomahawks. So the computers would have been here where these empty brackets are, and then the uh, solutions that they plot would live in these safes here. You can see they're big honking safes. Luckily, when the ship was uh, decommissioned, they changed all the safe codes back to 502550 and wrote it right on the safe. So really easy to crack into these days. Uh, however, nothing left to get a hold of. So... The Tomahawks of the 1980s that this ship carried, uh, they didn't think for themselves. You would plot in the course they were going to fly. They have a downward facing ground mapping radar on them, which would uh, read the terrain under them and ensure that they are staying on the course that they were told to fly. Then when they reach a preset uh, point, they go up to their altitude and then crash down into a target. The Tomahawk is designed to fly close to the ground, ground skimming, uh, so that allows it to both navigate on its own and uh, avoid most radio uh, radar detection, which is good because it's a fairly slow moving missile. Now this is specifically for the land attacking Tomahawks. Obviously there's not much terrain to map uh, if you're launching over the sea. So with that you plot your course into the missile, and it does have its own homing uh, radar on it so that when it gets to the last known position of the target you're firing at, the, the enemy warship you're engaging, well then it starts a search pattern and starts looking for that warship. Uh, and odds are if the warship is still in the area, it will find it. Uh, but that's part of what TP is evaluating. Is that warship still going to be in the area, or does it have the speed and uh, course-changing ability to completely leave that area before your missile gets there? So we're now underneath the midship's Tomahawk deck. Uh, this whole enclosed area would have been completely open uh, for most of the ship's career. When they added those Tomahawk cruise missiles, they expanded the superstructure to enclose that area uh, so that one they've got a larger platform above for the missiles to sit on uh, it takes a lot of room not necessarily to hold the armored box launchers but to reload them and uh, that also gave them the internal space to put a lot of the equipment associated with the armored box launchers so you can see uh, the wiring here that runs up above to the missile 
Uh, there are both cooling spaces, there are uh, spaces that have pumps to flood them if they take damage, and then there's a lot of the computing equipment and whatnot, which is what you see here. The Soviets had long-range missiles, uh, and the United States wanted to catch up. So the Tomahawk was that option. It was going to take time to build new ships that could carry Tomahawk cruise missiles, uh, particularly in the vertical launch tubes that uh, the Navy was transitioning towards. So reactivating New Jersey and the other Iowa class battleships in the 80s gave the Navy the option, or the opportunity, to deploy the Tomahawk cruise missile immediately rather than waiting 10 years for a design to be created, uh, developed, and built. Because the missiles could be retrofitted onto the ships in a special type of launcher that we'll see next, uh, they had to convert older uh, spaces on the ship to carry those missiles. So one of the modifications made to New Jersey was she lost several of her five inch gun mounts, four twin mounts. Uh, and these mounts made room for the missiles themselves to be placed on deck. They also left open their handling rooms, uh, which were directly under the mounts. So these handling rooms are more or less directly under the uh, missile launchers. And so this space was also taken over for some of the equipment needed to run the Tomahawk cruise missiles. So again, the Navy never confirmed or denied that the battleships were nuclear armed, but they had the capacity. So much so that uh, this is one of the guard stations associated with the Tomahawks. A Marine guard uh, and somewhere around 65 Marines were assigned to the battleship in the 1980s, uh, would be guarding these missiles, especially if they were nuclear capable. So from here, uh, you've got check-in cards, you've got a phone and other systems. And this little booth was welded right onto the outside of the superstructure. And from here under cover, I can see the uh, armored box launchers for the missiles. So right here, where 40 millimeter guns once sat during World War II, are the armored box launchers. In the closed configuration, like this one, uh, it is fairly well armored, Looks to be about an inch and a half thick, uh, which is pretty well armored for a modern Navy ship, nothing for a battleship. And then this is it open in the firing position. Each armored box launcher can hold four missiles. These missiles can only be reloaded in port. And if you look on the deck here, you can see the rails on each side which would be uh, used with associated missile loading uh, equipment while tied up next to the pier. Yeah, so you load the missile in port, you take it out with the armored box launcher closed. When you are ready to engage a target, you have plotted your firing solution uh, on a little computer uh, disc. You have evaluated it in the TP. Uh, you, you are tracking your target, you plug it into the computer consoles down below, you raise this, fire it, and uh, the Tomahawk does the rest. Something like 1,200 conventional Tomahawk cruise missiles uh, have been fired since the 1991 Gulf War. Famously, Iowa-class battleships Missouri and Wisconsin uh, participated in that war, firing cruise missiles from positions just like this one. Uh, so over the last 30 years, something like 1,200 of these missiles have been launched into the Middle East. Uh, these missiles form uh, one of the tools in our foreign policy arsenal. If negotiations don't work, a Navy ship parked off the coast in international waters can target 
enemy sites ashore, whether it's somewhere we suspect are uh, making poisonous gas or nuclear warheads uh, or airfields being used to bomb civilians in the Syrian civil war, anything like that. And we can launch a salvo of these $1.8 million missiles uh, to neutralize that site. Thanks for watching. Remember to tune in all week and next week for more content on uh, specifically focused on nuclear weapons, uh, nuclear power, the use of nuclear warheads, that sort of stuff, what we're calling our nuclear fortnight, which is part of our 75th remembrances of the end of World War II, the only time nuclear weapons were used in combat. Uh, thanks for watching. If you have any questions or comments, drop them in the comment section down below. Uh, I'm not an expert on Tomahawks. Maybe you work with this system. Let me know what you know. Uh, if you are interested in supporting our YouTube channel and the museum during this tough financial time, check the description down below for ways you can donate. Uh, and as always, thanks for watching. Remember to like, share, and subscribe so you're notified when we put out new content.